On behalf of our director, Juan Carlos T. Gonzalez, I welcome everybody to the museum's third biodiversity seminar this 2021. And we hold this seminar series as a way to uh, promote biodiversity conservation and uh, education. Our speaker today is Ms. Mary Christine Cada. She is currently a faculty member of the biology department of Trinity University of Asia. She obtained a BS biology degree from the Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila. She finished her master's degree in microbiology from the University of Santo Tomas, where she was a member of the Fungal Biodiversity and Systematics Group at the Research Center for the Natural and Applied Sciences. Um, her research interests include um, fungi, environmental cleaning, and geographic distribution. So um, everybody, let us all give a big warm welcome to Miss Mary Christine Cada. Mom. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for that kind introduction. So good morning to our um, uh, to our audience uh, today uh, discussion. So again, let me share my presentation. Okay, so can you see clearly my PowerPoint presentation? Yes, we see it clearly. Okay, thank you. So I am here to discuss about the fungi that lives within the plants. And as mentioned in the, in the invitation, I'm going to discuss about the different biodiversity that, uh, that can be found in the plant tissues. So we call it actually as endophytes. Endophytes can be either a bacteria or fungi, and these microorganisms can live in a healthy plant tissues without the signs of any diseases or morphological changes for at least part or the whole life cycle of a plant. So this microorganism can colonize a healthy plant tissue either intercellularly and or intracellularly without causing any apparent symptoms or disease. And in terms of endo, uh, endophytes, so as I mentioned, this can be either a fungi or a bacteria. So for a fungi that inhibits the plant tissues without any causing diseases, it can be either called fungal endophytes or endophytic fungi. If bacteria naman po, it can be called as bacterial endophytes or uh, and uh Sorry, bacterial endophytes or endophytic bacteria. So actually, the words endophytes uh, was first coined in 1866 by Anton de Berry. So this type of microorganisms, uh, which is the fungal endophytes, they are commonly associated with almost all plants uh, being studied nowadays. And they also exhibit complex interaction with their plant host, which involves mutualism as well as um, antagonism okay so the endophytic fungi or fungal endophytes can be isolated from different plant species even uh, between non-vascular plants and uh, vascular plants okay for example i have here on the slide i give a certain or common fungi or endophytic fungi that can be isolated from different plant species. For example, Phomopsis. Phomopsis is commonly isolated from different plant species. You can isolate that from different common uh, plant species that can be found in our environment. Um, some of those commonly uh, endophytic fungi that can be isolated from the plants are Cladosporum, Coletotricum, uh, Philostica, Penicillium, and Acromomium. Actually, some are all uh, Aspergillus and Fusarium can also be isolated as endophytic fungi. Knowing that this type of microorganism or this uh, Fungi species is a well-known parasitic fungi, but again, it can also be uh, isolated as endophytic fungi, fungi. And not only that, endophytic fungi can be isolated from different plant tissues, from shoot systems to the root system. So everywhere in the plant organs, actually, you can isolate those. And with that one, and the fetic fungi are considered as an important component of biodiversity as the distribution of endophytic microflora that differs within the plant host. However, 
it is still remain unclear about the omnipresence of endophytic fungi symbiosis with the plant and the extent of their contribution to the fungal biodiversity. So as mentioned a while ago, endophytic fungi can be isolated from different types of plants, either vascular or non-vascular. However, uh, in in most studies being done nowadays, they are focusing more on vascular fungi. So for example, we have here a study performed by Park and al. in 2017. They isolated fungal endophytes from what they called mountain cultivating ginseng. So what they did, they collect different uh, ginseng from the mountains of South Korea, and then they isolated fungal endophytes. So their study actually isolated around 1,300 uh, total, uh, total species of fungal endophytes, and from these 1,300 isolates, they identified uh, four unknown species, and these are two fungal endophyte species and two fungal species. And if you notice here, most of the isolates from those uh, from the ginseng, the highest number of different fungal endophytes was identified in the root system. So they isolate actually around 70 isolates in the root tissues alone, followed by the stem in which they have 54 isolates, as well as this uh, from the leaf, they isolated around 48 endophytic fungi. And from there, from that uh, fungal species, if you notice here, most of the isolates that they have were from the Ascomy uh, Ascomycota genus, in which Ascomyces are known as a highly diverse in fungal endophytes. And the previous table that I mentioned, if you notice, most of the species that commonly isolated from the plants are commonly from Ascomycota. Another one is from their study, if you notice here, most of their isolates is from uh, trichoderma. And we all know that trichoderma is one of the, the well-known parasitic uh, fungi in plant, in plant agriculture. But here, they, cause, uh, they don't cause any plant pathogen. Okay. So here in the Philippines, we all know that we, uh, we la Philippines considered as a hotspot in which we have well known, uh, we have around 90,000 or 9,000 well known plant species. So, from there, there are also researchers here in the Philippines that is, uh, they have the interest in the field of fungal endophytes in the past 10 years. So, since uh, Philippines is uh, known for having different medicinal plants, there is a certain study from Bicol in which they isolate fungal endophytes from 10 selected medicinal plants in Albay. So in their study, they isolate their fungal endophytes from different plant species in which they isolated that from different location. And they categorize this location between upland, lowland, and coastal area. And in their, uh, in their isolation, in their isolation period, so they isolated around 120 fungal species and 17 fungal species were identified. So commonly, if you notice on their study of the isolated fungal species, still belong to Ascomycota uh, genera. And most of their isolates from the upland, according to their study, actually, they categorize the upland as uh, those area that is exposed to anthropologic activities. So that means, despite of the exposure with anthropological activities, the presence of endophytic fungi with the plants are did not disturb with the anthropologic activities. Of course, since Philippines are uh, locate, uh, located in a, is considered as a tropical country, we different have uh, different types of forests, and we have the around six thousand endemic species here in the Philippines, and there is a certain study performed in a uh, endemic tree here in the Philippines, which is um, Canarium ovatum, or what we call the pili tree, that is commonly found in Bicol region. So in their study, um, they isolate around four 
uh, they collected samples from four collection sites in Bicol. And from their study, they isolated a total of 100 fungal endophytes, which they classified uh, from their isolate, they classified this isolates to, uh, that belongs to 18 genera, such as genera such as Acrimonium, Alternaria, Chematomium, Colotetrochium, uh, Pomopsis, and Rigotonia species. So actually, this uh, genera that I mentioned, it indicates about the high frequency and abundance of this type of genera in those isolates. So this study also showed that there, this is the first time it indicates the presence of fungal endophytes in the pillar tree and that the pillar tree is a good substrate for fungal endophytes regardless of geographical location. So most of the study actually that is available in different um, database, fungal endophytes usually isolated from the leaves as well as from the stem. However, fungal endophytes can be also isolated from the fruits. So here, um, there's a study performed about fungal isolation or fungal endophytes isolation from a fruit called as capsicum anum or siling laboyo. However, this study only showed about eight fungal endo endophytes were isolated, but from those eight, there is one species that is remain unidentified until now. So since this is considered as a novel, uh, no, this is unidentified, by, but I cannot say that this is a novel species that can be a possible source of different natural products in terms of application of endophytic fungi. So since uh, the Philippines, we, uh, in terms of the natural products, we need to identify other potential source of these natural products. And we all know if the microorganism can withstand extreme condition, there's a possibility that they can also uh, be applied in different, uh, in the fields of, for example, medicine, in, in bioremediation, so on and so forth. So actually here in the Philippines, there are studies uh, done regarding isolation of fungal endophytes from the mangroves. So there is a study performed in Luzon area. So from this study, uh, they isolate fungal endophytes from different uh, four locations here in the Philippines. We have in Camarines Sur, two places in Sambales, and one place in Pangasinan. So the study isolated around 40 mangrove fungal endophytes from the stems as well as the roots of 12 host mangrove species. And they collect that uh, mangrove, or we call it as MFE, in which they isolate that in 12 different mangrove species from different places here in the Philippines. Now, um, it indicates from that study that the colonization rate in Camarines Sur was higher by 95% than those estimate, estimated isolated rate in Sambales as well as Pangasinan. So here it indicated that in Sambales, they only have 48% isolation rate. However, in Pangasinan, they have around 34 degrees, uh, sorry, 34% isolation rate. Uh, in terms of um, the, the reason why uh, about this isolation rate is because of the effect of the weather system. But I'm going to discuss that later on. Okay, so the study also showed that most of the, okay, so the study also showed that the frequency of endophytes is also dependent on the host tissue, okay, with different parts of the mangroves in which they harbor the different fungal communities. So there is also a study about endophytes from Visayas region, but this study cannot represent the entire uh, fungal community in, in, in Visayas region. Okay, so the study uh, was uh, the study isolated mangrove fungal endophytes from two locations, the late and summer, and they these uh, fungal endophytes were isolated from four different types of mangrove hosts. And those mangrove hosts are different 
from the mangrove hosts that used here in this Luzon study. So in this uh, study, they isolate actually seven 73 fungal endophytes and they subjected this for actually for natural products or is uh, potential for antibiotic resistance as well as for bioremediation application. So from this study, it also indicates about that there is a high diversity and richness of fungal endophytes, especially from the plant or mangrove hopes known as the Rhizophora macronata from Samar region. So from this uh, studies that I presented, it indicates that the endophytes isolated can be varies from plants to plants and from species to species. And it can also varies from one region to another region. And of course, as mentioned a while ago, the isolation or the diversity of Macrophagal endophytes can be differ in terms of their climate climatic uh, condition of the same region or in different region. So, the population actually of endophytes can be greatly affected by climatic conditions as well as the location where the plant host grows. Okay, so the study of Charep Serat et al. in 2005, he studied about the temporal changes in terms of relative frequency of total endophytic fungi from, uh, from two plant species. So he used uh, two plant species, which is the tick tree, and, uh, sorry, tick tree and the rain tree, which are the tectonic grandis and the samanea salmon respectively. And they found out that so the mature leaf from the Tectona grandis had a greater number of genera species and has a higher colonization frequency than those the young leaves, as well as their occurrence in the leaves increase during the rainy season. Okay, so the question now, how can we isolate this endophytic fungi from the plant host? So commonly, we use, of course, since we're dealing with fungi, we use what we call the potato ad, uh, potato dexos agar. Okay, so actually, uh, there is a question provided already in which how can we do a proper collection of this uh, endophytic fungi? So from the collection side, so you're going to pick the, for example, we're going to use the guava leaves. So pick the guava leaves, place that in a ziplock, and then that ziplock containing the, the guava leaves, place that in the ice box. So you need to process your samples within 24 to 48 hours. Okay, so for isolation of the endophytes, you're going to use or you're going to perform surface sterilization. But before that, you need to wash first your leaves uh, using the tap water in which you're going to remove any dirt as well as debris that can be found on the leaf surface. So if you already removed those, so you're going to subject your sample or leaf sample into surface sterilization in which you're going to have a series of washing using 75% ethyl alcohol, uh, commercial bleach will do, as well as distilled water. So once you already done with the surface of uh, surface sterilization, you're going to place your samples on a PDA agar, or sorry, on a PDA plate or potato, potato dexos agar in which it is supplemented with a certain antibiotic. The presence of antibiotic in that PDA plate will inhibit the growth of any leaf-associated bacteria uh, on your sample. Okay, so after that, you're going to do another type of uh, 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 skill or test in which you're going to do leaf printing. Performing this uh, type of uh, test will determine if you successfully isolate an endophytic fungi. So in leaf printing, what you're going to do is to do as, as uh, so you're going to do uh, touching or tissue prints were prepared by touching the leaf uh, fragments on the agar plate for around a minimum of 10 seconds. Okay, so now you're going to incubate those two 
plates in a room temperature and then after incubation, if there is an absence of any fungal and bacterial growth on the tissue prints, it indicates that you ha you successfully and you successfully perform the surface sterilization. Okay, so another question is that how can you say that the fungal endophytes is considered as true fungal endophytes? Okay, so because of the development of molecular biology, so it brings a new perspective of studying the diversity of different species, especially the endophytes. So here I am showing about different types of uh, different types of molecular tests in identifying your unknown uh, isolated fungal endophytes. We commonly use the ITS uh, in identifying as well as uh, analyze, analyzing the phylogenetic of these uh, isolated fungal endophytes okay, with the use of ribosomal DNA. So with the use of 18S as well as 28S genes in which this is considered as your identification marker for fungal endophytes at high taxonomic levels. And it also assists in the separation of genus as well as the species level. However, there is uh, there are some advantage advantages or there are some disadvantage advantages in using this ITS barcode no especially in terms of inter and intra specific distances among the different fungal groups so with this there's another thing, technique we call the DGGE or what we call the denaturating reagent gel electrophoresis uh, this technique is capable of separating closely related sequences by their differential mobilities in a gradient of the naturans. Okay, so actually there are already some studies uh, performed this uh, successfully in terms of studying the endo, uh, studying the fungal endophytic communities. Okay, by sequencing the bonds. Of course, with the recent development of the, in biotechnology, there is what we call the high throughput sequencing or what we call the pyro sequencing, in which it enables the metagenomic and metagenetic analysis. And it also provides a powerful alternative to molecular studies of fungal communities in natural environment. So actually, the use of this uh, pyro sequencing has been successful in different uh, studies performed abroad. And another one, we have here the DNA barcoding. So actually, the DNA barcoding is, uh, it indicates or it employs a short, effective, and standardized gene region to a specific um, species. So this one, it really indicates if the fungal endophyte is really um, fungal endophytes. If you if you really isolated a fungal endophytes. Now, why do we need to study this uh, fungal endophytes? Now, we already see some uh, existence of uh, well-known microorganism in terms of their uh, antibiotic resistance or antibacterial activities. We also have studied about antiviral activity of some well-known uh, fungi. But of course, we have uh, we need to know some other resources, especially in addressing some concerns in, for example, in terms of the medicine. We have now the emerging diseases of different infectious uh, agents. Okay. Now, the reason Another reason of studying the fungal endophytes because they have different applications in biotechnology. Okay, but if we're going to discuss about more on the plants alone, the macrofungal sorry the fungal endophytes they promote plant growth as they don't uh, they do not manifest any uh, pathogenic agent if this plant is infected by any uh, fungi. So it help in plant growth and it, it also helped them in adapt to the better of the environment. So actually some um, endophytic fungi also helps in nutrient cycling. So it is a, it can be applied in two technology, which is the biodegradation as well as bioremediation. And of course it can also protect about uh, it can also protect the end sorry that endophytic fungi 
can protect the plants in extreme environmental conditions. Especially there is uh, the endophytic fungi has the ability to release a certain hormone that can be used for biocontrol agents. And of course, as mentioned, by, uh, fungal endophytes can also be a good source of bioactive compounds that can be used in different uh, assays and also for treating some, for example, uh, some re-emerging and emerging diseases. So they can also a good source of antibiotics and antiviral um, uh, application. Uh, these are the things that can be used your that can use your fungal endophytes. So actually, there are studies now uh, nowadays since. Um, for example, here in the Philippines, we have a very rich biodiversity in terms of vascular plants, and there are now different expeditions performed in which we, uh, in the Philippines, there is uh, new reports of new species in which we actually, uh, there, there is a study we performed during our graduate uh, courses in which we studies a certain and fungal endophytes isolated from a noble plant species isolated from Palawan. So we tested that for anti-cancer treatment as well as antibiotic treatment. And it showed a very good uh, report about this. And then actually it was published in 2019. So as mentioned, uh, fungal endophytes can be a good source of antibiotics. They can also be a good source of biocontrol agent than using our chemical pesticides. And there are also studies uh, that also use the fungal endophytes for antifungal activity. And there are studies for antioxidant property. But I am more familiar with the biodegradation in which from the isolates from the one that I mentioned a while ago in which Aporilio collected uh, in 2015, I subject uh, this mangrofungal endophytes for the biodegradation of paper cellulase, uh, paper waste material. So from there, it indicates from that study that the mangrofungal endophytes exhibit um, Actually, from those 14 isolates that I get from Aprilia studies, uh, we use, from this study, it indicates that Verticillium nigrensis has the highest enzyme activity in terms of their crude extract. And all of the isolates from Rhizora, uh, Rhizophora apicolata shows that all of those fungal endophytes isolated from this mangrofungal uh, species exhibit uh, all of those exhibit, exhibit enzyme activity. So, yes, na bullet ako. Sorry for that one. So, actually, uh, in our recent studies, uh, in terms of mangrofungal endophytes, we are now determining about the end product of this um, uh, cellulitic activity using this type of mangrofungal endophytes. So, with that, I, I and I'm done with my discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ma'am Christine. Okay, uh, it was a uh, it was very technical in nature for you know based on my experience because I'm not uh, I'm not a biologist or I do not I'm not uh, familiar uh, with uh, endophytic uh, fungi, but uh, probably our our audience here can uh, throw in some questions so that uh, we could start the ball rolling. So uh, may I call on Dr. Jennifer Niem uh, to throw her uh, questions uh, and tell it to the audience and ask it from uh, Dr. Kada, Ms. Kada. Okay, Ms. Jen. Hello, uh, good morning, Christine. Good morning, um, I just would like, yes, I just would like to ask if, would you know if there are any fungal endophytes which is being used commercially for use in plant disease management? For plant management, ma'am, am I correct? Plant, plant disease management, commercially available, meaning they are being sold in the market commercially. Actually, ma'am, the reason why endophytic uh, 
endophytic fungi became well known in the field of science because of the discovery of taxol. Uh, this taxol, it is known as the multi-billion dollar multi-billion dollar drug because it is uh, this taxol can now be used as a treatment for anti-cancer. It was uh, developed in 1993. So it was actually accidental discovery in Pusha at the moment. Po. What's the genus again? Is that a genus of the fungi? Um, no, ma'am. I forgot the name. Is the, that uh, the commercial? That is the product. Is That's that the, the product. Ah, the product. Yes, already, ma'am. They use that in medicine for uh, treating cancer nowadays. Uh, but what about for plants? Um, no, uh, no information yet regarding that one, po. As far as I know, ma'am. Ah. Uh, if I may contribute, uh, Trichoderma viride and Trichoderma hashanum, they are being used now commercially for for control of, uh, like, blights, um, downy mildews, um, soil-borne diseases. But I, I don't know of um, uh, if they are being used here in the Philippines. Mom, right. for actually for endophytic fungi, it's more on the the studies for endophytic fungi are usually done in Southeast Asia, especially in India, Thailand, and Malaysia. So here in the Philippines, actually, limited pa po yung alam natin regarding endophytic fungi. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Niem. Uh, may I call on uh, Kamar Amiril? Uh, meron siyang question. Kamar? Um, good morning po. Good morning. Uh, just curious about uh, on the natural products discovery in the country. Um, any insights or information regarding natural products that are obtained from endophytes in the country? Do we have uh, commercial products already derived from these endophytes? Thank you. Um, in terms from uh, regarding natural products, it's more on exploration pa lang po regarding uh, this endophytic uh, fungi. So, well, far as I know, wala pa po siya. Kasi uh, actually, I, we submitted a certain project regarding this endophytic fungi from a certain non-vascular plant for addressing the, the what you call this, uh, bioremediation in manufacturing industries. But in terms of natural products, far as I know, wala pa po. Okay. Unless hindi pa po, for example, in NICER program, they're not yet oriented regarding this uh, endophytic fungi into natural products. Thank you. Uh, Kamar, uh, may I call on Patrick Hernandez in of CLSU? I think uh, he has something to share about trichoderma. Patrick? Um, hello po, good morning. Good morning. Um, um, alumni po ko from Central Luzon State University and meron po kami institution doon na kung saan nagde-develop sila ng mga tag biofertilizer, for example, trichoderma, whereas um, they isolated and cultured and uh, binabenta po nila yung ibang species ng trichoderma kasi... Um, they established uh, some researches and then they develop um, some fertilizer na mula sa trichoderma. And then you can contact the Ramon Magsaysay Center for Agriculture and, and, and Environmental Studies regarding the product. Kasi, um, yeah, available po siya sa Central Luzon State University. mag ba? Um, sorry, the trichoderma use were isolated as endophytic. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's uh, endophytic, but uh, ang uh, alam ko po as I binubudbud siya sa soil and then they use it as biofertilizer, as a bioremediating, kasi meron silang bioremediating property, para, something like that. That's as far as I know. So, I don't know what's the exact species of trichoderma. And then, you discussed earlier na you, some species ng trichoderma ay rich in roots. So, probably, um, there's a significant or there's a correlation between these species isolated na trichoderma na kinukulture sa Central Luzon State University and sa study na pre-nascent nyo. 
I guess. The, the last question is uh, how they're going to relate. Tama po ba? Yeah, baka maybe there's a relationship sa species ng trichoderma na commercially available sa Central Luzon State University and sa trichoderma species na sa present niyo po kasi nabanggit niyo na maraming mga trichoderma species na na-collect sa roots and then yung mga trichoderma species na ginagamit or na commercially available sa Central Luzon State University ay binubudbud siya sa soil so yeah Um, regarding the one that I presented a while ago regarding trichoderma, it's just that Park and Al, Park and Al, uh, isolated most, uh, they isolated most of their, mm. sorry, they isolate most trichoderma species from their isolates. So they did not even specify the gene, the specific level or species level of the trichoderma species. It's just that, um, as mentioned a while ago, trichoderma species very day. Uh, sorry, trichoderma verde is commonly used for for biodegradation in some uh, studies already. Um, the biggest question now may be for me is, for example, if trichoderma species from as, the normal trichoderma species as fungi and the trichoderma species as endophytic fungi, if there is a difference between their activities. So maybe that one of the question can be also answered in the near future. If there's a oh. big difference. Okay, But thank in you. In terms of, yeah. Thank you. So, uh, a question from Miss uh, Mary Me Caralde. Uh, she's on mobile, so she cannot uh, personally uh, appear in the Zoom. But she asks May I know your references for isolation procedures just for comparison with their study? Uh, Mary Me Caralde of MSU Marawi. We used the Arif, Arifin et al. Uh, published in 2011 in surface sterilization, uh, what we did in our laboratory right. during our my graduate years. All right. From Mr. John Hermi Paul Cerezo, um, he asks whether uh, he, he would like to ask if there are other methods to isolate secondary metabolites efficiently. Um, in terms of uh, secondary metabolites, what I experienced in isolating this one, we, uh, the mycelia and another form, di ba parang pag dinikdik niya siya or ginray niya siya. Mm -hmm. So we all, we compare those, the one day in, in the mycelia and the one from the, from the culture that we use. So from there, we differentiate actually if there is a big difference between those metabolites present in the Colletoticum species at the time of uh, experiment. Any more questions? Ayan, thank you po. Yung sa taxol po, it was isolated from a grass of uh, endophytic fungi known as Taxomyces andriani. Thank you. Any more questions? Dr. De Leon, our curator for microorganisms, microbial culture collections. Any, any question in mind? Thank you, thank you, um, thank you, Miss Teen. Thank you, Ma'am, uh, for inviting oh. me, Ma'am. <laughs> thank you very much for accepting the invitation. It was a very informative uh, presentation. Uh, may I know you mentioned you we can use for surface ster uh, sterilization, sterile water. Uh, have you tried using ethanol? And I think I've heard uh, we can also use uh, sodium hypochlorite. Yes, Ma'am. Am I right? Uh Yes, ma'am. Actually, see surface sterilization. It is a process of, uh, yes, surface uh, sterilizing the surface of the plant leaf. So from there, actually, you do a series of washing using first the 75% ethyl alcohol for around a minute. And then after that, uh, you're going to wash again your sample with the commercial bleach around 5% hypochlorite, and sodium hypochlorite. And for about... Um, 30 seconds, and then after that, you're going to subject the sample into 75% ethanol again, and then before you use the distilled water. So it should it should be a combination of those. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Para okay. kayo nagagam sa lang. Opo, combination po siya. Hi, Flor. Uh, yes, thank po. you very much, Misty. Uh, Flor, I, I just would like to acknowledge the presence of Professor Junichi Nakagawa, who is also attending the Uh, the 
the presentation oh, of Miss Teen. He is a retired Japanese professor. Hi, Sensei. Thank you very much, sir, for attending. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, I think, uh, do we have more questions from the audience? Or, uh, Sensei Nakagawa, do you have a question for Christine? <laughs> I forgot the <laughs> beginning time of this the beginning time of this seminar, so I, mm, I see. only I was only able to listen the very last part. But uh, I if I would be allowed to ask some question, sure, I was sure, interested yeah. in the uh, bacteria which can live inside of the fungi, which can modify the fungus product, which is often toxic but can change this toxic material to a very uh, useful material do you have such uh, example for the bacteria sir uh, i do not have since i have i do not have any experience in isolating bacterial uh, bacterial endophytes i'm sorry for that one no i mean fungi usually often have very toxic product fungi or yeah mushrooms for example and you are studying i i if i understood correctly you are studying the bacteria which lives inside of the cells of such plants or fungi or mushrooms so that they can convert the toxic usually toxic materials to somehow useful material that can be used for the treatment of the diseases of human or something like that. Have you heard about that? Or you are, are you experienced in such isolation of such products? Um, no, sorry, never, never been. Oh. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Sensei. Um, I think we have uh, one of our curators also here, Dr. Sabino. Uh, Dr. Sabina, do you have something to say or do you have something to ask of uh, Christine? Okay, good morning. Uh, my apologies morning, because uh, I also uh, forgot about the time and I only <laughs> it's okay, was sir. able to log in a little late. Mm -hmm. No questions from me. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, sir. So, um, All right. Uh, we have a. Uh, we have. All right. We have uh, two more. Um, can I call on Paul Dave Panzo to ask his question? Paul Dave. Paul, are you online? Hello. Yes, Paul. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Um, good morning, Paul, ma'am. Um, are there any studies conducted in the country regarding the potential of um, endophytic fungi as biofuel? Because I've read an article regarding the potential of endophytic um, fungi because they release um, volatile organic substances, which are hydrocarbons. And then I think they have the potential to become biofuel. They call it micro, micro fuel. So are there any studies? Uh, conducted in the country about that. Thank you. Um, so at the moment, there is no studies regarding um, the use of that. There is no yet studies regarding the use of endophytic as a biofuel here in the Philippines. It's more on hydrolyzation or how are you going to cut down or break down complex molecules such as cellulose fiber into a useful uh, ethanol, for example. However, here in the Philippines, as I as I experience, actually, I am also targeting during my uh, graduate studies about the production of biofuel. Um, it's difficult, especially if you're going to use um, enzyme, since uh, we need to have a called room for isolating and maintaining the enzyme. So, okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank, Thank you, Paul. You. Thank you. Um. Uh, may, may I call on Donna Rose uh, Genubata to, uh, she, she sent a direct message, but I think uh, it's best that uh, everyone hears uh, her question. Ms. Uh, Genubata, can you, can you state your question, please? Uh, 
Hi, good day, ma'am. Good morning. Ma'am, meron po kaming samples, ma'am, na na-isolate galing po sa mangrove ng Sultan Kudarat. Three coastal municipalities of Sultan Kudarat, ma'am. Um, the problem, ma'am, is wala po kaming molecular facilities dito, ma'am. Mm. Um, paano po yung problem po natin doon? Yun, ma'am, hindi, hindi po namin alam kung saan po kami magpamolecular, ma'am. Pero ready na po yung sample namin, ma'am, na pure culture na po yung mga isolates. I think, ma'am, um, you can also coordinate with other universities to do collaboration in naming your um, endophytic fungi in terms of genetic analysis so that uh, you can name your um, your isolated endophytic fungi. I don't know yet if there is available... Um, Kasi ang problem here in Metro Manila, we're still in lockdown or in quarantine, so we cannot go to our laboratories even if we wanted to help you uh, in conducting the analysis. Yun. Pero pwede ko pa bang isend, ma'am, yung pictures? About what po? Yung mga isolated endophytic fungi. Ah, yes po, for mor morphological compar apa, apa. comparison po. Yes po. Yes, yes. Thank you po, ma'am. Thank you po. Hi, Flores. Hi, sorry. Yes. If yes. I may add, yes, uh, regarding the the inquiry made by yung last uh, person. Miss uh, Ginobata. Miss Ginobata, yeah. I think they can or she can contact the oh. Philippine Genome Center in Mindanao to help them with the uh, molecular or perhaps the sequencing of the uh, isolated fungal endophytes. Uh, they can contact uh, PGC, uh, PGC, uh, Philippine Genome Center. PGC, Philippine Genome Center in Mindanao. Center. Okay. Yes. Thank you, you ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, yes. uh, Marian. Uh, Mr. Edmund Capus also, uh, he sent a chat. Uh, he says that the University of San Carlos, I think mm -hmm. that's where in, is it in Negros? Yeah. Opo. Yeah. Uh, Somewhere can, in Visayas region. Uh, can help in the molecular part. So yes. probably if, uh, uh, if you cannot... Uh, or if the PGC, I, I understand the PGC is doing lots of things right now. And if they do not have the, the, the time and resources to help you, ma'am, probably yeah. University, of, University of San Carlos can also help. Pro just just uh, um, on, try to contact them. Sir Edmond, pwede po magingi ng email ad, sir? Okay. So, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, I think uh, it's already 10.52. Uh, seeing that there are no more questions, probably uh, we could proceed. Thank you. Of course, we are thank you, thanking uh, Miss Mary Christine uh, Kada, Mom Kada, for that wonderful uh, presentation. And uh, of course, we wish that uh, we hope that you could still uh, be a speaker in one of our future seminars. Um, at this moment in time, may I call on our director, uh, Juan Carlos D. Gonzalez, to uh, say a few closing remarks before we proceed to the uh, giving away of the virtual certificate of recognition. Sir, Sir JC. Yeah. I, uh, good, uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, um, sir. Good morning. It's indeed uh, a pleasure that uh, and the opportunity that you're here to attend the um, to second, second sure. and last for the week. Um, we're having a lot of um, seminars this week and for the rest of the month. So be sure to um, look at our website and our, our Facebook page and our Twitter account to uh, log into the different uh, seminars that will be uh, lined up for the rest of, uh, well, the start of the semester. I think we have like 10 for the rest of February. February, sir, 10. So, kasama na po sa akin next week. So, um, yeah, um, again, congratulations to our speaker. Um, it's very interesting because it's like yung endophytic uh, fungi because um, we often think about the pandemic and a lot of zoonotic diseases. And sometimes there are, may mga lumalabas sa mga um, blogs na ah, meron din bang nakukuha na parang zoonotic or phytotic 
how do, I don't know what the right term is if you get from plants. Of course, there are other phytopathogens that you can um, transfer or transmit from plants to humans. Uh, but it's in interesting because a lot of these endophytic fungi are actually used for biocontrol. So sila yung ating safeguard in terms of, of um, the future pandemic. So again, uh, congratulations. And um, hopefully your research will bring us a lot of um, um, innovation in terms of protecting us from, um, from a lot of future diseases. So again, um, I'll present the... Ako na magbabasa floor? Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll, you, sir. Um, again, uh, present this certificate of recognition to our speaker, uh, Mary Christine Kada, um, um, for her uh, serving as resource person during the 2021 MNH Biodiversity Seminar Series uh, entitled uh, The Fungi Living in Plants, Distribution of Endophytic Fungi in Plant Tissues, um, held, of course, today, February 5th, 2021, um, via Zoom uh, through the Museum of Natural History and Forest Science Yours truly, JC Gonzalez. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mom Kada. Thank you very much, Mom Kada. So, um, yes, sir, thank you, Paul. Right. So, final reminder our link to our online evaluation has been already posted uh, at the chat box. So, you can click on that already. So, you could uh, fill in the evaluation form, or if uh, you are going to park that idea later. Just remember to go to bit.ly slash 2021 slash bss.eval. So take note of this uh, bit.ly link. And uh, we will be accepting responses only uh, until 5 p.m. this day. Um, you are, we are encouraging you to visit our website at mnh.uplb.edu.ph and if you want to contact us via email, our email address is shown below, mnh.uplb.edu.ph. And of course, uh, this uh, webinar is being recorded and we will be uploading uh, the recording hopefully by tonight. And so tomorrow you could review the, the, the recording. Uh, we are also inviting you to uh, visit our social media sites in Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Just look for UPL, the account UPLB Museum. Um, of course, uh, we are also excited to tell you that um, we are also uh, present in Wikipedia and uh, in TripAdvisor. So just look for UPLB Museum of Natural History. So this is the last uh, BSS for the week. And uh, next week, we will be having three more. Uh, we have uh, one on um, methods on detecting and uh, observing the Palawan bear cat on Tuesday. And we will have uh, our director present on this, the survey results of uh, avian survey results of uh, Del Carmen, Shargao, the mangrove forest there. And another topic on microbiology on Thursday. So with that, thank you very much. Maraming salamat po. And please uh, like us, follow and share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Maraming salamat po. And happy weekend.